It's time now for your weekly fishing reports and real-time outdoor news from the South region. This is Fox Sports Outdoor South. Hi everybody and I want to welcome you in to one of the most famous bass fishing lakes in the entire southern half of the United States. Just over my right shoulder is big beautiful Lake Fork, Texas. People come to this lake from all over the world and they come with very high expectations of catching lots of huge bass and many of them leave very disappointed. On today's episode I'm going to give you some tips some techniques that may help you become successful if you'd like to make a trip to Lake Fork or another highly pressured lake when others aren't. While we're doing that, we're taking you around the region for your very latest fishing reports from your local lakes, rivers, and bays from our team of insider reporters. The first piece of information I want to give you though is that if you come here, you need to set realistic expectations. You're not going to load the boat with big ones every time you come here. Be realistic about what you expect to catch, and if you're not familiar with the lake, you need to hire a fishing guide to show you around, and we'll give you a lot of information on fishing guides on our members only page on our website at foxsportsoutdoors.com. Let's get the Bass Tracker boat launched into Lake Fork. Let's get you back to the FSN studios for your weekend planner. The Salooner Tables are forecasting tough conditions for your weekend fishing opportunities. The best chances for game fish activity during the day will start at 2.32 in the afternoon on Saturday and around 3.30 on Sunday. The sun will rise at 6.16 and set at 7.58. And look for the moon to be 20% visible in the evening. Stay with us, we have all your fishing updates from around the region. Plus, I'll return with professional angler Gerald Swindle on the Ask the Pro feature. Back in just a bit. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff? Low price every day by Mercury Marine, celebrating 75 years of marine excellence, by Strand Fishing Lines, the standard of dependability, and by Tracker Boats. It's more than just a boat, it's a tracker. Got one. Oh, he's around a stump. There he came loose. Good fish. That's a good fish right there. Just take our time with him. Play him in here. Oh yeah. Oh, we'll get him hooked right under the chin. Got him. Look at this. All right. Well, there's a good way to get it started right there. Welcome back, everybody. We're on Lake Fork today on Fox Sports Outdoors. And uh, we got us a bass to get things started. That one hit a little soft jerk bait there. All right, let's give you a look at that one. That's just a, a good, solid, early summertime fish right there. We're gonna let it go back right here. As I mentioned, Lake Fork is a highly pressured lake. Lots of folks fish here year round. These fish see a bunch of lures. Here's my number one tip for you catching fish if you're gonna come here or a lake like this one anywhere in the south. Stop running around. Fish are everywhere on this lake. There is nowhere you can go in this lake that you can't catch fish just like that one. Every creek, every point, every ledge, every place you can go, these fish are everywhere on this lake. So what you need to do is pick you two or three areas that you're going to stay all day long and concentrate on those areas. Find the fish, fish it thoroughly, figure out what the fish are doing, maybe a half mile long stretch of something, whatever they're doing that time of the year, and stay put and figure it out and you'll do much better. That's my number one key to fishing Lake Fork or a lake like this one. Hey, let's get you started with some fishing reports here. Let's take you to Tennessee and Kentucky and check in with my buddy there, Crispin Powell. Hey guys, in Tennessee and Kentucky, the weather is just getting beautiful. It's getting prettier by the day. Spring is here. Water temperatures are, are just steadily rising and that's just that's setting fishing on fire. On Kentucky Lake here, let's get around the bank, throw a Mr. Crappie tube or a grub or, or a jig and it's just crappie banana. Uh, you find any type of hard wood cover, stump, stake, brush, especially on a gravel bank, it's lights out. 
bass fishing's on fire. Lots of numbers, lots of average size fish. The bigger fish are gonna be right behind them, guys, so just stay with it. Uh, getting really good reports out of this past week at Center Hill. There's been a couple tournaments over there over the past couple weekends, and the, the fishing has just been really good. Some big sacks being weighed in. The best report I've gotten in a while comes from Lake Cumberland, up around the Somerset, Kentucky area. Guys, they're, their fish are moving up. Just this warm weather just got them on fire. Lots of uh, spinner baits, uh, uh, like a weight bait around a dock. I heard a really good report about like a Strike King weight shad. A couple big fish being caught there on that. Guys, other than that, the, the, the other best news I'm hearing is once again, Dale Hollow, the small mouth are turning on. They're starting to bed. The large mouth are starting to bed. Guys, Kentucky and Tennessee are really good right now. With spring coming on, it's just getting better by the day. We'd love to see you here. God bless. Got him. Got him. Wow, what an acrobat. Not a giant fish by any stretch, but a good solid lake fork bass right there. All right, well, we've got some fish going and that one's got it kind of in his tongue, so I'm gonna have to do a little surgery on that one. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Hey, I wanna tell you, I love my Bass Tracker Protein 175. I've probably mentioned that before, but I've got a video up online that I want you to see. All you do is go to our website, click on the YouTube logo, that takes you to our YouTube channel, and look at the how-to videos and find our Bass Tracker Pro Team 175 video. It's all the great reasons why you're going to love this boat. Stay with us. Back to Lake Park in just a moment. Look at this. Watch this. He's swimming with it. Swimming. Got him. Coming down the line. Up. Oh, big fish. Big one. Look at this dude. Got him. There's a toad right there. Wow. Look at that big pig. And I don't have a scale. That's easy 10 pound plus bass right there. That one hit a lizard, plastic biffalo lizard by Gene LaRue. Show you all the baits a little bit later. But how about that? There is a lake fork pig and that's what can happen when you come here and you're patient all right welcome back everybody you're on fox sports outdoors today and uh, talking about how to fish a lake like this that gets so much pressure lake fork just gets beat to death right quick we're going to go ahead and put this fish back right here let's let that big dude go back let's give your next key pointer on catching fish on this lake and that is find a less obvious, less pressured, less likely spot to fish. You don't wanna just pull in on the same shoreline that everybody else is fishing, get in line and fish for the same fish that see one lure after the next. You wanna find your little out of the way spot that's a little different. This is a long tree row through here and it's in about 10 feet of water or so. That's a likely spot. Look for the little points on that tree row the little cuts in, the places where maybe a dock comes out and meets that tree row. Those are the kind of migration routes where you'll find bass. And that one was right on the end of a little point, right off this little tree row right here. That's a perfect looking spot. Let's check in with Bob McNally in Saltwater in Mississippi, Alabama, and Georgia, followed by Jimmy Jacobs in those same states with your freshwater report. Hi everyone, welcome to Fox Sports Outdoors Coastal Fishing Report. This portion of the show is brought to you by Egret Baits, makers of the new Voodoo Shrimp. Not only does the Voodoo Shrimp really look like just like a shrimp and catches all kinds of inshore fish, but it also is very tough. It really holds up to repeated strikes against even toothy fish, and it lasts a long time when you put them where the fish are. So cast the Voodoo Shrimp where you find fish, and they'll do the rest. Flounder are the big news along much of the coast. Throughout the inshore areas of Alabama, Mississippi, and Georgia, flounder in a one to three pound class are being caught in good numbers. Captain Patrick Gamison in Alabama is telling me that the rain has really messed up a lot of the inshore fishing for trout and redfish, but he's doing okay on flounder in that six to 11 foot of water fishing uh, jigs very slowly along the bottom. But he says some bigger uh, flounder are being caught 
and farther down in the bays around Dolphin Island and around uh, Fort Morgan. Over in Georgia, Captain Tim Cutting uh, on St. Simons Island is also catching flounder inshore. But he says the big news there is whiting. There's a lot, getting a lot of whiting along the beaches. Again, on the incoming clear water, when the, when the surf is not really roughed up from the occasional pesky spring winds that we're getting. Tim also tells me that triple tail is starting to show on that Georgia coast. You go along in 12 to 25 feet of water looking for the, these uh, triple tail on the surface. They you take a popping cork and rig a, a jig or a shrimp imitating lure like a voodoo shrimp, cast it to them, pop it a couple of times, and they'll do the rest. Spanish mackerel also are showing up along the coast particularly in Georgia where trollers are doing very well. Brought to you by the Old 96 District, South Carolina's real freshwater coast. Lakes Greenwood, Russell and Thurman offer outdoor adventures and angling action. For fun family weekends or vacations, visit the historic Old 96 District. Springtime brings the best smallmouth action of the year on northwest Alabama's Pickwick Lake. These smallies have finished the spawn, they're hungry and they're feeding heavily. Now the top area to be fishing is in the headwaters of the lake below Wilson Dam. And the time to be there is when water is coming through the powerhouse. That current really turns on the smallmouth action. The best tactic is to drift from the tail race down to the State Route 133 bridge. You want to be fishing in the breaks between the fast and slow water, but don't overlook any of the rock piles or stumps that are breaking up the current. Lures to be throwing are swim baits or Alabama rigs, and you want to bounce these along the bottom. You don't want to just drag them with the current. Over in East Georgia, the catfishing on Clarks Hill Reservoir on the Savannah River is red hot. Now this lake is officially Strom Thurmond Reservoir. It's upstream of Augusta and it's on the western edge of the old 96 district of South Carolina. The flatheads in this lake have been running up to 40 pounds in recent years, and six pound channel cats are really common on the lake. Best areas to be fishing are Little River near Holiday Park, the Broad River arm of the lake. You can also try Keg, Germany, Big, or Hart Creeks. In Mississippi, Neshoba County Lake, southeast of Philadelphia, Mississippi, is hot for largemouth bass right now. Now this public lake is only 138 acres, but in the last month it's given up two 10 pound lunkers. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Costa Sunglasses. See what's out there. By Lou's, setting a new standard in fishing performance. Feel the difference. By Strike King Lures, number one in fishing. By Lawrence Electronics. Find, navigate, dominate. Look at this. No giant, but just a good solid slot type fish right there. Hey, welcome back everybody. There is a Lake Fork bass for you. Caught that one on a biffle bug. Hey, glad to have you along today as we're uh, just giving you some tips and pointers on uh, how you can come to a lake like Lake Fork that gets so much fishing pressure. So many folks fishing it. These fish see so many baits and how you can still have a chance to catch some fish. These fish see so many spinner baits going across their heads, crank baits, top waters, those kind of things, moving baits that they really kind of get lulled into just sitting there. So what you've got to do is either put a Texas rig, a drop shot rig, a Carolina rig, or a weightless rig. One of those four types of rigs with a soft plastic bait, and I'll show you a variety of those baits on the Academy Sports and Outdoors right stuff at the end of the show, but there's a little ditch that winds down through there and then goes out off that little point. And uh, I'm just fishing real slow and I'm flipping and pitching to all these trees and stumps along this little creek channel and a, a good solid fish bit right there. So slow down, use all kinds of soft plastics, be very patient, try to make a fish bite if you're going to fish highly pressured fish like they are here at Lake Fork. Let's go to English Glover over in the Carolinas. Hey folks, Captain E here with your Carolinas Report brought to you this week by Marshalls Marine. Located in Lake City in Georgetown, South Carolina, we're your bass boat specialist since 1969. For all your nitro and bass tracker needs, visit www.marshallsmarine.com. And don't let the camo fool you, I'm always thinking about fishing. 
And while the turkey seasons are ending in the Carolinas, it's time to start getting out and targeting those favorite spring species. Bass are still on that bed spawning, and for me, I love to get out and target the summer trout, aka the weak fish, on the inshore reefs and the saltwater side of things. In the freshwater side of things, we're really hearing a lot of great reports coming off of Lake Norman and Lake Wiley. And down in South Carolina, the stripers are starting to school up on Lake Murray, and the guys there are starting to have multiple 20 plus fish days while they're out there on the water this time of the year, chasing those stripers that are schooled up on all that bait. Also in the rivers, get ready for the shell crackers and brim, because they're getting on the beds, and it's time to start loading that boat with some wonderful panfish. Moving on to the reef, like I mentioned, the summer trout, AKA weak fish, which we can only possess one fish now due to the bag limit change, but there's some great big fish on the reefs right now as these fish are starting to get into their breeding mode. Um, it's not uncommon to catch a four to six pounder this time of the year. Moving offshore, the black sea bass are still sure to be found on all your ledges and live bottoms, and the offshore fishery in the Carolinas is hot. It's not heating up, it's hot. The dolphin are showing up, the tuna are there, and the big wahoo are still here. You need to get out there and target those fish with your fishizzle bally heads. Now this has been your Carolina's Report brought to you this week by Marshalls Marine. Remember, work smarter, not harder, and keep your chaos organized. Hey, I'm really excited about a brand new piece of equipment that I've got on my boat today for the very first time. Now we've had the Lowrance Elite 7 units around for a little while now. They're the units that will split the screen three ways and show you chart, 2D sonar, and down scan 3D imaging all on the same screen. Well now Lowrance has introduced 2D chirp sonar on their Elite 7 units. This is a dramatically improved 2D sonar over anything we've ever had in the past. The key words are target separation. It will separate fish from bait fish, it will separate fish from the bottom, and it will separate fish from cover or structure. So you can actually tell what's a fish, what's bait, what structure better than you ever could before, and you can do it all without pulling the sensitivity up and increasing the clutter on the screen. And maybe the best news of all, it will fit with your old Lowrance HDI transducer, so you do not have to buy an upgraded transducer to run the brand new Lowrance Elite 7 Chirp Sonar units. We don't have time to tell you all about them right here, but go to our website at foxsportsoutdoors.com. We've put up a couple of links to some videos that will demonstrate in much more detail the brand new Lowrance Elite 7 Chirp, C-H-I-R-P, sonar units. Go check it out right now, and we'll be back to Lake Fork, Texas. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Excite AGM Marine Batteries. Starts like new, stays like new longer. By Gene LaRue and Bobby Garland Lures. With our baits, a good day of fishing is in the bag. By Motor Guide, trolling motors engineered for anglers. And by Nitro Performance Fishing Boats. Welcome to the big leagues. Welcome back everyone. It's time for the Ask the Pro feature where viewers can get insider tips from professional anglers. This week's question comes from Paul who writes, I fish mostly in murky water. Does crankbait color really make a difference or should I concentrate on size, noise, and color shades? For the answer, we checked with professional angler Gerald Swindle. You know, when you talk about fishing uh, crankbaits in muddy water, what, what plays variables? What, what do I look for? Naturally, I'm gonna look for brighter colors. The less visibility, the brighter the color. The reds, the chartreuse, the blacks, those are gonna be the three that I fall back on. Uh, then sound variation just depends. If it's a heavily pressured lake, I don't throw a lot of rattling baits. That means if I know 15 people's fished in front of me, I'm not going to throw a bait that makes a lot of noise. So remember that in dirty water, if it's less pressure, throw something that rattles. If not, worry about the color. Stick something brighter is always better. Thanks, Gerald. If you need help from one of the pros, visit our website and follow the Ask the Pro link to submit your question. Now let's see who wins a new pair of sunglasses on the Costa Catch of the Week. This week's winner in the Costa Catch of the Week contest is Jesse Willis of Douglas, Georgia, showing off an eight and one half pound largemouth bass he caught out of Lake Oconee in Georgia. If you'd like to enter our contest and have a chance to win a brand new pair of Costa sunglasses of your very own, just go to our website at foxsportsoutdoors.com on the right side of the front page, click on the Costa Catch of the Week box, follow the instructions, 
send us your big fish photo and you could be our next winner. To see all of the Costa frame and lens styles, simply go back to the front page of our website, click on the Costa logo, and you go straight to their website. And there you can see all of their frame and lens styles, including the frame style that I was wearing on this week's episode called Tuna Alley. Next up on the Academy Sports and Outdoors Right Stuff feature, it's the right gear to catch bass like we caught today on Lake Fork or any other highly pressured lake in your area. I'll show you three of those beginning with the simple Texas rig. It begins with a sliding bullet shaped weight, free sliding on your line, and then about a three or four aught offset worm hook. And then we Texas rig today with a Jean LaRue Biffle O Lizard, and that's what we caught that big 10 pounder on. Now, the next one is basically the same thing as a Texas rig, but it's weightless. There is no weight at all on the line, a little larger hook, about a five odd hook stuck completely through the bait, and that's a Jean LaRue salt flicker, and then we skin hook it out the other side, and that makes it weedless. And finally, we did not use this one today, but this is the drop shot rig, and it begins with a special drop shot hook. We tie it on, we stick the tag end of the line through the second loop of the hook or the second eye of the hook and then about 18 inches below that is a special Strike King tungsten drop shot weight. I have one of the strangest phenomenons that happens to me about 98 out of every 100 times that I pull in to fuel up at a gas station or convenience store. So I swipe my card, I fill up the truck with gas, I press the receipt button, and then the inevitable happens. Receipt fail, or see cashier for receipt. I promise you it happens to me almost every time I fill up, and I can't talk to anybody else that that happens to. Now, here's the moral of the story. That's a little thing. I could let that get under my skin. I could go in and chew somebody out, tear somebody's head off, be unkind, tell them they need to keep receipt paper in their gas pumps, or just let it roll off my back, not let Satan get to me, and not become frustrated and unkind. That's my recommendation. Hey, keep the little things in life, the little things. Smile, let it roll off, go on down the road, be kind, be happy, you'll be a much more peaceful and content person because of it. Keep the little things, the little things. Hey, I hope you enjoyed our trip to beautiful Lake Fork in East Texas today. Hey, don't be fooled. It was a difficult day between me and Monty the cameraman. We only got about eight or nine bites all day long, but as you saw, some of those, including that big 10 pound plus largemouth, were the right bites. That's a typical day here on Lake Fork and many other lakes across the south that get the kind of pressure that Lake Fork does. Hey, don't forget to join us for next week's show. We'll be on at six o'clock Thursday evening with the repeat airing Sunday morning at eight o'clock. And if those times ever change, you'll be the first to know right on the front page of our website at foxsportsoutdoors.com. Till next week from Lake Fork, Texas, I'm Barry Stokes saying be safe, have fun. Bye-bye, y'all.